Many people on the right are hoping that Donald Trump wins not just because they want him to win, but they're hoping to see an explosive meltdown from the left like we did in 2016. Well, I don't know who is going to win, but the polls suggest it's going to be Joe Biden. Yet still, as of right now, Democrats are starting to sweat a bit, dare I say, panic. Why? They are not seeing the turnout they need in early voting in Miami. Miami-Dade County is deep blue. It's supposed to go Democrat, but right now, according to early election data, it is it, it, Miami is swinging Republican very, very hard. Now, Miami is still Democrat, but they're seeing weak turnout, weaker than it was in 2016, and they're starting to get scared. Of course, all of these polls across the country are saying crazy things. Texas is going to swing Democrat for the first time in 44 years, they say. It's a toss up state. How could that be? Texas? Texas is red. Some people are saying Minnesota on the right. They're saying Minnesota could could possibly go red. I mean, we saw the mayors in the Iron Range endorse Donald Trump. Well, the pundits say Minnesota is going to be blue. Our forecast says Minnesota will be Democrat and Texas might actually flip. If that were true, wouldn't Joe Biden go to Texas and try to actually flip the state? Why is Joe Biden going to Minnesota, a state which is supposed to be a Democrat stronghold that he shouldn't need to campaign in? Could it be, my friends, that the polls are wrong, very wrong, and Joe Biden knows it? Imagine there is a 10 point swing in Joe Biden's favor, inflated numbers. I use 10 points because we've seen from certain research I've highlighted in the past that about 10 percent of Trump voters lie about who they're going to vote for. Now, I don't know if that's actually true, but imagine this. Imagine Texas is in toss up territory. Imagine Minnesota is seven points for Joe Biden. That actually means that there's no way Joe Biden can win Texas because Trump actually has a massive advantage and that Minnesota is slipping and might actually turn red. We've got some stories coming out from Politico. They talked to two researchers who said Donald Trump is likely going to win and they are undercounting the Trump shy vote. Now, naturally, many of these pollsters are trying to dispute these claims. But one of these organizations, Trafalgar Group, predicted Trump would win in 2016, and they got it right. They predicted most of the states correctly. They're now saying Trump is going to win re-election. And all of these pollsters are desperately trying to say, it's not true, you can't win. Donald Trump won't win. Well, in fact, perhaps he really will. And although these polls came out and it seems that we should trust them, why should I trust the media at this point? No, they've lost all credibility, especially with the Hunter Biden story. It's gone. In which case, I don't care for any of the polls. I care about what we're seeing. And what are we seeing? We've got to stop the bleeding. Democrats sound alarm in Miami. Party officials in Florida's most populous county are sweating weak early voter turnout among several key groups. All I care about is, are they going to get the votes? I don't care about their models, their polling, their forecasts. Let's take a look at the hard numbers. Before we get started, head over to TimCast.com slash donate. If you would like to support my work, there are many ways you can give. You got a PO box, you want to send me some stuff, but the best thing you can do is share this video. Now, for those of you that may be voting Trump, this is perhaps good news. You will be hopeful and you will hear that the polls are doing really well. So maybe you want to share that boost the morale of those who agree with you. I suppose if you're a Biden supporter or someone on the left, maybe Democrats need to realize they don't have this one in the bag. I saw a tweet from Cenk Uger re- uh, earlier today where he was like, Trump knows he's going to lose or whatever. And I was like, look, of all people, you know, Cenk should understand the risk of saying we know what's going to happen. I'll just say this. I don't know who's going to win. Part of me wants to say, trust the experts. The polls say Trump will lose. But now we look at as the days go on, They start saying, actually, it's improving. It's improving. And now it looks like Trump might actually win Florida, Minnesota, even seems like he's going to win Pennsylvania. If we go off the news, if we go off the sentiment, if we go off what we hear from our friends and our family, and if we go off those who were right in 2016, Donald Trump's going to win. Now, I don't know what will happen because things have changed dramatically. But if you think it's if you think I do a good job and you think this information is is relevant, please share this video and don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. And let's find out exactly why Democrats are freaking out. Politico reports 
Democrats are sounding the alarm about weak voter turnout rates in Florida's biggest county, Miami-Dade, where a strong Republican showing is endangering Joe Biden's chances in the nation's biggest swing state. No Democrat can win Florida without a huge turnout and big winning margins here to offset losses elsewhere in the state. But Democrats are turning out at lower rates than Republicans and at lower rates than at this point in 2016, when Hillary Clinton won by 29 points here and still lost the state to Trump. (laughs) That's freaky. One particular area of concern is the relative share of ballots cast by young voters of color and less reliable Democratic voters. Part of the problem, according to interviews with a dozen Democratic elected officials and operatives, is the Biden campaign's decision to discourage field staff from knocking on doors during the pandemic and its subsequent delay in green lighting and funding a return to door to door canvassing. Yikes. Sounds like they're already starting to make excuses. Sure. Quote, we did not get the kind of funding for different vendors who would do that type of work until late in the campaign. Rep. Frederica Wilson, a party institution who represents Miami's heavily black congressional district. Wilson said the good news is that Biden's running mate Kamala Harris is working with her on a turnout event for this weekend geared toward young black men. But the veteran congresswoman said there are still skilled operatives in her district who excel at turnout work who have yet to get approved by the campaign. A puzzling delay for an operation that raised a record $363 million the month before. Unless, of course, here it is. Joe Biden is not planning on winning. And all the money they're raising, they're going to pack their coffers for the next cycle because they don't think Joe Biden can be president. They don't want to waste any up and coming young stars in the Democratic Party. And so they're not going to spend money in Florida because they know they're losing it. Joe Biden's campaigning in Minnesota, which feels like he's desperately trying to stop a dam from breaking. If he was actually on the offensive, he'd be in Texas saying, I'm going to flip this state blue. But it kind of reminds me of like a boxing match when you got one guy just pushed against the corner and he can't get out and the other guy's dominating the center. That's it. Joe Biden, he's got everyone cheering for him, saying he's the favorite, but he is getting pummeled right now. Quote, I screamed, hollered, I called, I lobbied from the top to the bottom. Wilson said of her efforts to get turnout operations started in the community, including sending written proposals to, the Biden, to Biden's campaign and having virtual Zoom meetings with his advisors. In a sign of the state's importance, Biden and Trump both campaigned in Florida on Thursday. Biden held an event in Broward County, which is located within the Miami Fort Lauderdale media market, and then held a rally in Tampa, where Trump held his own event to burst boost early voting turnout. Wilson and other Democrats aren't panicking yet although I would say they are. They take comfort in the fact that huge swaths of Democratic voters cast absentee ballots by mail statewide and that Biden narrowly leads in most Florida polls, including a Monmouth University likely voter survey released uh, uh, released Thursday that put the former vice president up by six points. That margin is far bigger than in Democratic internal polls. Party officials also point out that black churches are planning souls to the polls event Sunday that encourage voting after church. However, in the era of coronavirus, church services are virtual, virtual, and organizing those events is more difficult than in past elections. Which brings me to the next and most important bit of news from Jason Miller. Now, of course, Jason Miller is, he's principal, SHW Partners, and a real Donald Trump 2020 senior advisor and the 2016 communications advisor. He tweeted, just spoke with a smart Democratic strategist who is upset with the media's suppression campaign against Biden voters. Dems have spent months scaring voters away from in-person voting and are now realizing they need those votes. And media COVID fear-mongering isn't helping. Additionally, these possible Biden voters just aren't that excited to go stand in line for him on top of the media-driven COVID in-person voting fears. Massive enthusiasm disadvantage for Biden camp heading into election day is a problem. The red wave is coming. And then we see this from Amy Klobuchar breaking because of last minute ruling Minnesota, Minnesota do not put ballots in mail anymore. In the middle of a pandemic, the Republican Party is doing everything to make it hard for you to vote. Stand up for your rights, vote in person or take mail in ballot directly to ballot box. Yikes. They are now advising Eric Holder, Amy Klobuchar, and many others. They're advising people not to vote by mail. 
But they spent the whole year telling people that COVID is coming to get you. And there is a major advantage that Republicans have. Republicans aren't that scared of it for the most part. And Democrats are mortified. Do Democrats want to stand in line for hours to vote for Joe Biden? No. Do they want to stand in in line for hours to vote against Donald Trump? No. Some of them do. A lot of the Trump derangement people, they will probably crawl over broken glass to vote against Donald Trump. But you need more than that. The people who are voting for Trump are excited, enthusiastic. They want to do it. That says to me that there is a serious error in the polls. Now, I want to make sure I highlight this news here. It's from the Star Tribune. Dueling presidential campaign visits come to Minnesota. Wow. Joe Biden is defending against a possible flip nearly 48 years in the making. This state, Minnesota's not voter Republican for the president since 1972. Why is Joe Biden there if he was going to win easily? Because he's not. I'm sorry, because the polls are wrong. From Politico, people are going to be shocked. Return of the shy Trump voter. In 2016, pollsters Ari uh, Captain and Robert uh, Cahaley saw Trump coming. In 2020, they see polls again, underestimating his support. I'll tell you one of the most interesting things about this is that Robert Cahaley mentions that the polls were wrong in the midterms. That's right. The pollster said they fixed everything. Don't worry. We got it wrong in 2016. We fixed it. It's going to be good now. And then they were wrong in Florida by like four percentage points. Check this out. This is from Robert Cahaley of the Trafalgar Group. He says, uh, well, let, me, let me read you the question. Election day is next week. National polling averages show Biden leading Trump by around nine points. In 2016, averages had Clinton up around three. But you both ran polls that showed Trump winning the presidency. What do you see? Robert Cahaley says, first, we don't do national polls. And that's for the, for the same reason. I don't keep up with hits in a baseball game. It's an irrelevant statistic. But the battleground state polls are a little closer than the national polls. And that's a lot at play. People are going to be shocked. A lot of people are going to vote this year who have been dormant or low propensity voters. I think it's going to be at an all time high. The model of who's going to turn out this year are very flawed. What type of person comes out for Trump? They're not a normal election participant. They're a low propensity voter, probably like me, to be completely honest. We included them in all of our surveys in fall 2016, and we are including them now. I'm going to tell you something before I read this, because he points out how the polls are wrong. This is is important. I haven't voted since 2008. Uh, uh, I I didn't vote for uh, in a presidential election since the first time I voted. I voted recently, and I voted all Republican. And that's the first time I've ever done it. In the past, I voted for all Democrat when I was younger because I was basically just told to. I voted for Obama because people told me it was like hope and change. And then I didn't vote. I didn't care. I thought the system was broken. But I'll tell you why I did. As I sit here and thought to myself, it's not going to be an easy thing to do. It's, uh, you know, I work all the time. I work uh, 16 hour days all day, every day. And I've not been a voter for a very long time. But I thought to myself something important. If I of all people, am willing to get up and and do what I have to do to make sure I vote. That said a lot to me, because I got to tell you, I've been lazy when it comes to voting for a long time. I've just not believed in it. And if someone like me is willing to actually get up and do it, that will say a lot for what other people are willing to do. I truly believe that if I say to myself, I will go vote, and then I do, a lot of other people feel the exact same way. And if you are one of these people who says, I probably should, but I don't know. No, you have to. You have to. You have to. Because the polls are wrong. Check this out. He says, polls are undercounting the people who don't want to give their real opinions. If they had corrected anything, why didn't they see Ron DeSantis winning in his 2018 race for governor in Florida? They made the exact same mistake with his opponent, Andrew Gillum. The final real clear politics polling average in that race had Gillum up by 3.6 points. DeSantis won by 0.4. They were off by four points. Now there's a margin of error in these polls. But I tell you, he's right. 
Kahaley said they got it wrong. They did not fix anything. This wasn't some random state's race. This was the hottest, meanest, neck and neck races for governor and senator in, in Florida in an off year election. Every single major player was polling that state and 100% of them got it wrong. We got it right. You need to make sure if you're voting on election day, I, I mean, I gotta be honest, you should vote early. You should vote early. And if, and if you're in a vote by mail state, drop your ballot off in person and do it now. You do not want to risk waiting until the day of with massive lines. Go vote. But also don't forget, bring several people with you. Make it a day. Make it a thing. Get your friends together and say, we're all going to vote. That's the thing we're doing today. Get everybody to vote. I'm actually really inspired to hear we're going to have record high voting, vote, voting turnout. It gives me hope that people are actually participating. But it also kind of makes me worried. It's that with regular people getting pulled into the fray, this could be people making like a last stand of some sort. Like, I'm going to try voting this one time. And if we lose the confidence of people, it could be bad. I don't know who's going to win. But I'll tell you what. Why does this guy Kahaley think that the polls are worse now than they were? The question asked of him was, Hillary Clinton was, uh, was, was up by three points and she ended up losing, but she still did win the national popular vote by about two. Joe Biden's at nine up nationally or more. Why should we assume he's going to lose if he's nine points above? I've heard it from other progressives. Listen, we know the polls may have been off in 2016, but there's no way the polls are off by this much. Except Rob Cahaley. Uh, Rob Cayley brings up a really important point. In 2016, what was the worst that would happen to you if you came out and supported Trump? People might be mean. You, you might be embarrassed. What's the worst that happens now if you come out and support Trump? You're beaten. You're fired. They target your home. They threaten you. Now, there's a, there's a big reason why people don't want to admit they would, they would support Trump. There's also the fact that, you know, people don't want to admit they want the economy to open back up. It might result in more people losing their lives. But Rob also makes a really good point about people getting phone calls, not answering them, and people just not wanting to share how they really feel with anyone, period. I mean, imagine this. You're distrustful of the media. They lie all the time. You get a phone call, and I'm supposed to be like, let me just spill the beans. They point out both pollsters. You've got Rob Cahaley, and you have Ari uh, Captain. They point out that people don't want to admit it to anyone, even their friends. So they have an interesting question they ask. Now, I could ask you, who do you plan on voting for? And people will say Biden. Well, let's get this. Who do you think your friends are going to vote for? And then people say Trump. They said in their past polls in several elections, asking people who they think their friends will vote for gives them a better gets them closer to the actual numbers than asking them who they would vote for. Nobody wants to admit it. So they might say, oh, well, you know, people around me, I think they're going to vote for Trump, but not me. I'm the virtuous one. Please don't hurt me. Makes sense, doesn't it? I think so. So what do we end up seeing if Donald Trump wins? It will be a catastrophe of historical proportions if the polls are wrong this time. And I got to tell you, I think they are. Now, I don't know who's going to win. I'm not going to sit here and, and, and say, I think Trump is going to win for this, that, and this reason. I think, you know, I mean, that's kind of what I'm saying. What I'm trying to say is, I think these things help Trump win. I don't know if it will be enough. A four-point swing still has Joe Biden up five points nationally on average. So he might still win. But if Joe Biden is up five points, Nate Silver said that puts him only in kind of safe territory. Nate Silver said in his forecast models, Joe Biden needs to be five plus in the national average to be safe. National average is meaningless. Battle stout, uh, battleground state. I mixed them up. That's what matters. Battle stout. Sounds like a beer. Joe Biden needs a significant lead nationally because the battleground states are where it matters. The Hill reports positive Trump polls are sparking polling circle debate. Could you imagine if the polls are wrong, worse than they have ever been? I'll tell you what, there's a lot of reasons why I want Trump to win. It may be that in my desire to see him win, I've got rose colored glasses and I'm saying, see, look, Trump can still win, but maybe the polls are just so bad. Joe Biden's going to crush it. I don't know for sure. 
I think based on the fact that Joe Biden's campaigning in Minnesota, it's not a good sign for him. Or he's so sure of himself, he's just dancing around and having a good old time in Minnesota for no reason. No, I think he's worried about losing Minnesota and he knows he can't win Texas. If Joe Biden thought he could flip Texas, he would be there because that is a massive victory that would probably make it impossible for Trump to win. I think it's 35 electoral votes. I'm not entirely sure. But Joe Biden's not trying to win it. He's trying to defend a state that he should easily win. That says to me that they are worried about this. But I'll tell you what, I can talk about the wars, the peace agreements, withdrawing our troops. I can talk about the things that I like, that I see with Donald Trump that he's improved upon. And I'll note, somebody mentioned this to me, and I got to fact check it. So, so, so make sure you fact check this one. That drone strikes under Trump have dropped dramatically since he fired John Bolton. That sounds like good news. I'll have to look into that one. You want to know what I'm excited for? Now, there are a lot of conservatives that are saying it's going to be so great when Trump wins again. The leftist meltdown, the screaming, the throwing shelves and flipping tables. Sure, it'll be entertaining. That's what some conservatives are saying. No, I don't want to see people suffer and freak out. I don't want to watch someone cry on camera and say, how could this happen? And drop to their knees and go, no, I'll admit it's funny to watch this stuff because people are overreacting for sure. But you know what I will absolutely bask in the glory of? The media being so insanely wrong that as institutions, the trust in them shatters. It would be like Donald Trump singing a perfect high C and shattering all the wine glasses in the room that is the mainstream media for all their lies, all their deceit all their duplicitousness and deception to watch them utterly fail and just say, finally, now you know when I say they're lying, they are lying because fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Fool me three times, you're not going to fool me again, right? If the media got 2016 wrong, everyone says, oh, okay, okay. And then we hear from Trafalgar Group, they got 2018 wrong as well, but no one really cared because it was an, you know, it was, it was the midterms. Imagine if they get the Trump numbers wrong twice. That'll be it. Their polling makes no sense. Trafalgar Group is heavily criticized by many pollsters saying they're claiming that Trump's going to win a Detroit district, a metro district. They're so crazy. Well, first of all, maybe he will. Nothing's impossible, right? More importantly, 538's model has a scenario where Donald Trump wins California and loses the national uh, and loses the Electoral College. Tell me more about how Trafalgar is wrong and 530 and all these others are just so right in everything they say. Forget the polls. Forget the media. Trust your heart. Go out and vote and vote for who you think is the right person. I don't care if it's Joe Biden. I don't care if it's Donald Trump. I don't care if it's Joe Jorgensen, Green Party, whatever you vote, how you feel is right and you will have my respect for it. Now, I will be disappointed in in my friends who are voting for Biden because I don't think they know anything about the uh, about the establishment crony Democratic politicians. And I think their their view of Donald Trump is skewed by fractured and manipulative media. But I look, that's not it's not it's not my decision to make. I might think I'm right. They probably think they're right. They can vote how they want. So you go out and vote how you want. That's great. I'm excited for the massive voter turnout. But I will say it, I will say it again. Don't don't listen to the media. Right now we are hearing, as I mentioned, from Trump's uh, communications advisor, the Democrats have warned all of their voters to be scared of the polls. Go vote by mail. They put all their eggs in this basket, and it was a big mistake. They thought they were going to win all these Supreme Court rulings. Some of them, not all of them. And now in the states where they told everyone the boogeyman's coming to get you. People are scared to vote. OK, it's not unfair that the COVID is, is, is serious. It, it is serious. But Fauci and Burks have both said we can vote in person safely. Just wear your mask. You know, do it right. I guess what we're seeing right now with Florida, with many other places, the GOP has got a lead in Michigan, Ohio, and I think Wisconsin. I mean, these are the blue wall states Trump's trying to win. And now he's campaigning in Minnesota. I think the shy voter is real. I think Donald Trump is on track for a very serious victory. That's just my gut feeling. In reality, based on everything I've seen, I just don't know. I just don't know. So let me clarify that because I know people are going to be like, use contradictions. No, no. What I'm saying is, in my mind, I cannot get myself to the point 
where I believe Trump is going to win because Biden is, 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 is in the lead and people really hate Trump and the media lies. And it's, 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 I have no idea. But in my gut, my gut instinct is like, how could Joe Biden win? I don't know if you saw the video, but I posted a video earlier. Someone else posted this video and then I commented on it. Joe Biden says, we are going to mobilize a true, what do you say? True and Nasha Bada de pressure. True and Nasha Bada de pressure. We're, we're going to mo- mobilize a true and Nasha de pressure. I'm not, I, I don't know what that is. It's one of the craziest things I've ever heard a president say. The craziest thing about it, everyone's cheering as he says it. He says, true and Asha bada de pressure. True, true and Asha. It's just gibberish. You're probably like, Tim, you're not even saying a word. I know I'm not saying a word. It's a, it's a video of him saying it. That guy, president, I just can't picture it, this. Look, Donald Trump, WWE Hall of Fame, bombast, all that stuff. But I can still imagine him winning. George W. Bush said some dumb stuff. But this guy, Joe Biden, saying random slurred gibberish words. I just can't imagine a man like that winning. So I'll leave you with this. I think the polls are wrong. I do. We'll see. It would be the it would be the end of media. It would be hilarious. But listen, we've got warning signs. The Democrats pay attention to this one. The Democrats in Florida are screaming because they're not getting support for getting out the vote in Miami. Why? Is Joe Biden really not trying to win? Maybe. And maybe the polls are wrong. I don't know. But why wouldn't Joe Biden be doing his best to try and get Florida? He needs to win Florida. I mean, Trump not only, look, we saw the blue wave, the 31, you know, moderate Democrats who won in the midterms. Republican senator and governor won in Florida. They need to be throwing everything they can at Florida. But instead, Joe Biden's in Minnesota. Minnesota, don't you know? He's a Democrat stronghold. He's not supposed to lose there. He needs to be in Florida or Texas. I think uh, I think Democrats are projecting a loss on this one. It's weird, isn't it? I don't know what to tell you. Except this. It's Friday. Tuesdays are coming. It's going to be fun. My advice to all the conservatives, there's going to be a lot of people on the right who will probably freak out if Donald Trump loses. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I am going to laugh. Life is just, it's just, it, it just is. We do our best, but you can't change. You can't uh, change everything. You can't control everything. You can't change the direction of the wind, but you can't adjust your sails, the old saying. And that means there may be a tide coming that's going to ha- push Joe Biden over the edge. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to laugh. It's going to be funny. I think Joe Biden's going to cause a lot of problems. I think it's going to de- be de- destabilizing. I think it'll be bad for a lot of people. But what do you do? Do you scream at the wall, drop to your knees and go, no, no. You act like an adult. You say, well, you know, better luck next time. We better campaign twice as hard and get that message out and fight for what we believe in. The Democrats, however, will explode. I think if I think if Trump loses, we're going to get a few conservative montage videos of people like freaking out, saying things like the end is here. Ah." And it'll be funny. And I'll laugh at that, too. Seeing Joe Biden say true and Asha bada de pressure, which is just random gibberish, made me laugh at the absurdity of today's world. If that man wins, Trump is going to Trump says he's going to leave the country. That will be wow. Come on, Trump. I know Trump's running against the media on this one. But if Trump loses, <laughs> it's going to be funny. I don't know. Just have a good time. Smile, Will. Uh, smile, won't you? I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 6 p.m. over at youtube.com slash timcastnews. It is a different channel from this one. Thanks for hanging out, and I will see you all next time.